shot, you know, um, Iran developing nuclear weapons, and uh, you, you, you've got uh, you've got people in Pakistan who think you can have limited nuclear war. So it could go either way. It could either go in your direction, which is positive and life affirming, but it's we're sort of on the edge of a a knife blade. Yeah, but no, but the thing is, collectively, as a species, we are very unique in our ability to extend our consciousness and make the world other than an Eden-like sense is the given lot of most of the creatures embedded in nature as we were for most of our existence on this planet. But when you get to where the weapons are, apparently, and there's modeling that shows it, mm -hmm. before about the year 1970, we were protected, mm. even in the Cuban Missile Crisis. There would have been, if it was an unleashing, we almost destroyed all of civilization, mm. but there would have been the continuation of the Homo sapiens species. Some few people continuing. Mm. But we have the ability now to wipe out, with the weapons that exist, and are at the behest of the generals and the geopoliticians, who perhaps don't have the vision that's needed to be unleashed, and you got people, uh, one would be Netanyahu who wants to bomb Iran so they can get a new enemy du jour. They're all fighting, it's all realpolitik. Whoever's got the weapons wins. Mm. That same principle still holds in terms of the operation of the planet. Is there something new in the fact that the weapons are now? It's the weapons. The weapons are species lethal. Does anybody disagree with that or do you think that's true? And if, when did they become species lethal? They weren't in the Second World War. I was born, I was alive, you were born, you were alive in the Second World War. We were protected in our infinite. Mm. Even at the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis, there would have been a few scraggling survivors of Homo sapiens as the leading edge of evolution in terms of consciousness and universe. Mm. Now, the weapons are wipe out every single human being that exists on the planet. Is that fantasy or do you think that's real? I Who thinks that's real? It. No, no, but, no. But, does anybody disagree or wants to disagree with that? That the weapons, even if they're unleashed in full tilt boogie, there'd still be survivors? No. You, you, you get your own point. Do you think so? Do you? Or have you thought about it? That's an existential new reality in evolutionary terms. You see? It's not like the 20th century, 19th century, or the Enlightenment, or the Re Rome, or, you know, the history. It's been slow. This is a quickening. I, I, I mean, that's something. And then there's also the capability, technological capability, Fuller and the Zeitgeist Movement. They are talking about the technological, newly developing technological capability of providing for everyone. Ephemeralization, doing more with less through good design. The microchip, the ability to transcend material scarce. What's the name of your book you're writing? No, say it out loud. Loud, loud. Say what it is. Enough for all friends. No, say it all loud. Enough for all friends. A enough for all forever. Forever is henceforth from now. History is a nightmare of scarcity. There's always been scarcity. Not enough. If you win, I lose. Zero sum. The whole history of the thing that's been written out is zero sum. We may have be transcending material scarcity at this very moment which is the counterbalance to the destruction, that two-edged sword. I don't think you're taping. I think it's taping. It's, it's taping. The red light's on? No. no. Yeah, it's yes, it is on. It's all on. You want to do that for a while? Yes, yes. Anyway, I just bring that up to bring up this thing. Because most people, if, if you say to them, your book, you know what they're going to say? You know what they're going to say? If you say, with friend, there is enough, henceforth, generations first are not going to have to be saying, I eat, you don't. I have weapons, I win. You are my slave. And the, that's the history of what it is. Power comes out of a gun. It still holds. If you were to say that, they would say that's ipso facto absurd. What, honey? I just, uh, our monetary person in Virginia just said he just knocked out the... Oh, get the thing off the, the, the mic, off the floor. Just put it up on there. And yeah, you're, you're, you're yeah. Yeah, just put it on the edge of the chair here. Just put it on the edge of the chair. Okay, so anyway, that's a rant. Anybody want to come? Is that make, they will say that's ipso facto absurd. Everybody's starved. The world is, a, 
But can you get your mind around the idea <coughs> that comprehensively there's a synergistic more than the whole, which is existentially challenged? Are we beginning the process of punctuated equilibrium? Are we beginning the pro we've been in steady state? You know, evolution works that way. We understand now. We didn't know it a hundred years ago. Give it go. It works. What's the noise? Uh -oh. Maggie, the it's noise. It's my telephone box. Um, so anyway, that's just something I throw out. This is the defining generation. Now, they probably thought that at Jesus' time, or they thought that at something else or something. But I, that's just something to throw out. This is the defining, so comprehensive, taking everything into account, begins to give you a picture where a book should be written called Enough for All Forever or something. What do you call the book? For all for all. Do you realize how idealistic and absurd that is? Everybody would say that's absurd. There's not nearly enough. Everything is based upon scarcity. The whole uh, uh, philosophical thinking, the whole material uh, geopolitical thinking is based upon who's got the gun to be able to go conquer the other side. And so I have a report in the New York talk, Times. Talk, talk, talk. Yeah, that. yeah. Only, only if you quiet down, then others can talk. Okay. I have a report in the New York Times today that a man in North Korea was executed for murdering his okay, children and eating them, thing. and that another man dug up his grandchild yeah, in order to eat it. And that's yeah. how bad it is and scarce in North Korea. Right. So when I hear something like, you know, for all forever, yeah, I, put it back I wonder the couch. what's the perspective and where it's coming from. When at the same time I read reports like Not these, to wire it to it. That people have to dig up their grandchildren to eat, in order to eat them. I pulled it in. And then, then we are talking yeah. of endless prosperity. Okay. Where's the disconnect? Well, I don't think there's a okay. disconnect. It's, really, it's abstract because the capability is not the reality. It's, the, it's like in, 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 in uh, climatology or weather or something, there's a thing called latent heat. When you get the unreleasing of latent heat that's in the humidity of a tornado, there's latent heat that's released that gives us terrible energy release. It happens throughout the evolutionary process before there was an Earth. There's latent, we have a capability that we do not have, and we have institutions that do not allow us to realize the positive capability that is latent within the technologically augmented uh, infrastructure that's capable. But we've got institutions that we're relating to that are outdated because they were all formulated in one condition is being qualitatively transformed to one where there is, the man's book is, enough for all, it's forever. Sure. And forever is on the assumption that evolution will continue along the hominoid direction and that we may be coming to the end of the human experience. That's not we were Homo habilis 200,000 years ago. There were no Homo sapiens. The evolutionary process goes steady state. Then there's a punctuated equilibrium. Mm -hmm. We're at the beginning of punctuated equilibrium for there to be realized a new un a new a new species <laughs> or a new trans there's a transhumanist you movement know, now to begin to do something uh, above the normal perceived the idea of history. And that we're yeah, born to curse and blessed to be born into that particular period of uh, evolution. You see it in evolutionary oh. terms, not historical terms. Or that, 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 well, that's a malfunction of the outdated institutions that they're being, you know, all the things that are manifested, all the injustice. <coughs> Every institution seems corrupt and unjust. Yeah, merely having the ability to wipe us off the earth by our own selves and by our own misdeeds is not a focal in and of itself. You don't think so? Not really, because. You, that doesn't make, that's not unique, that's not, you, that's it unique. Is, it is unique. That's unique to no, me. No one can ever say it's not unique because it has never happened before, so it is unique. But that alone is not enough to explain anything epochal. What can explain anything epochal anything is, our, is our ability to expand our population. I mean, I, I never hear anybody talking about how badly we have been overpopulating this planet and how much this planet can handle. I mean, it's all about economics, it's all about prosperity, but nobody seems to be taking it any seriously that we are so numerous now that it defies logic 
Well, both. Yeah, see, we, are, we, are, we are crowding out all other species. The lion was always regarded as the king of the forest. Now the lion is vermin in Africa. And that thinking of eliminating, there are tribes which say that they will kill each and every lion they can find. So <clears throat> the way we expand ourselves, crowd out other species, exterminate other species, that is epochal. Well, Not the fact that we can destroy ourselves. In fact, that might even be good for this planet. Well, that would be one way of seeing things, we, and that would be stopping at least seeing things evolutionarily and scientifically. Enlightenment, we're knowing. We had to put up creation stories to deal with self-reflective consciousness that was inherent to our species. They had to have some answers, so they invent gods, or they invent some story that gives meaning or answers that. But, they, 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 but we're, we're now at a, a, at a point where Malthus brought that up, he said, you know, the progression of population is geometric and goes arithmetic, but you'll notice it's where the countries that were the industrial, where the development and the, the material standard of living is one that is one su suitable for the full realization of the capability of the biological entity, rather than just truncated. So many people can't come close to realizing anything like a meaningful life, or a meaningful life even in materialistic terms. When that grows and that really goes, the population size goes down. Excuse me. You notice it's in the developed places the population goes down. There are so many people, people who cannot even come close to realizing the meaning of life, not merely in impoverished nations, but in highly developed ones, right here in New York. Yeah, but it, the <laughs> what is it? What? What? Excuse me for a minute. What's David? going on? I got a call from Virginia. Yeah. Apparently, the sound is not coming through. Well, I don't know. Plug something in if you can. We're pre we're going to record it here. I don't know what happened. It, did it come loose? Is it loose? It fell down, number one. Well, go check it and see if you can get it to work. I don't know what I'm doing. Plug it into the uh, machine. Why don't you go and kill it? Well, uh, I don't know how either. <laughs> I mean, it's just a simple yeah. thing. I don't know. Well, you're going to be disconnecting all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there some reason this cord is not stuck someplace? I don't know what you're doing. Oh, that's just a loose piece. Okay. Yeah, that's just I a know, loose this piece. Is, so the thing. is it still not working? I, I don't know. If it isn't working, it isn't working. Go and try if you can. Maybe you can make it work. But no, but that's, that's a thing. Uh, you know, if I may, there was a guy. This is all connected. Ro, what was his name? I, it'll come to me in a minute. He, a famous systems thinker. He was behind uh, Schumacher and um, Schumacher. Uh, Schumacher, small is beautiful, ecological, and that kind of thing. It'll come to me in a minute. It, it'll come to me. I always keep doing it, but I did a program with him up in Harvard. Schumacher, the guy who not discovered no. the star? No, not Not the astronomer. That's no, no. Schumacher was the small is beautiful. He, he wrote small is beautiful. Oh. He works at Harvard? No, no, he, this was 20 years ago. And he was the major person who was talking about population. And, uh... Are you talking about the guy who wrote Population Book? He wrote, not, not, not um, Paul Ehrlich, no, not him. He was another one. This is another guy who was a real... It'll come to me. He was a lot of thinking behind systems thinking ecologically and everything. We got talking. He would not say it on camera. We said it off camera. Because you're talking in terms of... What's the name of the book? Enough for all, forever, and that includes the ecology. That includes the ecology as well as um, you know, as respect for the ecology, a new conscience. We got a young man writing a book. Enough for all, forever. Enough for all, forever. You realize how monumental that is in terms of the fucking nightmare of fighting out of history and starvation. One woman wondering which baby she's going to let starve to death. Because there's not enough food, mm -hmm. and we had to. So anyway, the idea that he's writing that is it, it, very good in my mind. But this fellow, it'll come to me. Well, but he was talking about that, and I brought up Fuller. I, I didn't have uh, Zeitgeist to go to, and it was Fuller. Fuller, that was the major th thesis of Fuller. If you put all of his work together, and you put a pattern. He was saying, we have, we have at capability, the level of capability, not at the level of reality not the reality, the level of capability, 
we have got, and you could take it almost axiomatic, that through technological capability, we are able to, Cervantes, another person who said a major thing, he said there are only two classes in the world. And this is something that gets away from a lot of the nuanced arguments of dialectics and that. But he said, there are only two classes of the world, the haves and the have-nots. We talk about haves and have-nots, right? We maybe should investigate that more. How do you measure it? What does it mean to be a have? What does it mean to be a have-not? And then the, thing, the question you could ask philosophically or otherwise and then put modeling to it is, through time, has there been, through time, has there been an increasing, through evolution and the technology and everything that's going on now, exponentially new, if you're doing like that, has there been a higher percentage of the world population taking into account population trends, new technologies, resources, capability, all of this, has there been a higher percentage of the world population through time that could be seen to be a have? as opposed to have not a higher, a world population within a world thing. Do you think it's true that there's a higher percentage as we go through time of the population of the world that is able to be seen to be haves, particularly in terms of the capability? No, I wouldn't think so. No. You would think not? <clears throat> no, because the more the number of people on Earth, the more the number of haves too. No, percentage. And no, percent. No, make a division. The okay, dialect, you're okay, you're instead talking of dialing with uh, uh, Marx's dialect, the dial with haves and have nots. First, you have to get a definition of terms, right? To build a model. They've done it. Have nots. What does it mean to be a have not? I mean, it's food, housing, education, this, and that, but it's also a state of mind, okay. its ability, access to information. In, in terms of numbers. Not in numbers, percentage of. A yeah, percent in terms of percentages. They said like something, so, so if you have about $5,000 in the bank, you are one of the lucky in the 11th percentile. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't understand. You're talking the detail rather yeah. than looking at your pattern. No, no, well, no, no, no I, I'm trying to put Go the ahead, pattern in perspective. Yeah. If you have a, merely about $5,000 in the bank, yeah. you're supposed, supposed to be so lucky you are one of the few 11% on this planet. They have that much money at yeah. their disposal. So, 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 so I mean, so I mean, it's just $5,000 and you only can put you in the top 11%. So when you say that the percent is exponentially going up, no, no. That, that there are more, that more have, that there are much more have-nots than there I have at any time in this industry of this world. No, I was asking the trend. Fuller, for instance, Fuller went and he said, essentially, see, you need a definition of terms other than some geometric, uh, some uh, econometric model or something that's already on the books, because that's all done to reify some geopolitical position of advantage for one over the other. That same old bullshit that's going on in the name of politics. You're talking about how do you? Do, it, we don't have it. No, they just say your book is going to be graded with it's so facto absurd. Never can be. You're talking about something never can be. You said maybe for generations way down. It may be now emerging in terms of the intellectual discussion. This got to come up to inform the entire political class that's all reified within institutions that are outdated by the alteration. And his thing was, his thing was, um, he went through all the time like this. When we were in the cave eating carrion, we were pretty much half not. 200,000 200, years we've been here. 190 uh, and 190. There were, there, were, there were people who had carried to eat and people who did not. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Well, you're making a fine point on it. Maybe it's fair to do because you've got to get down to, when you're doing something like that, you've got to get down to something by uh, criteria. Well, I mean, what's your definition of terms? What's it mean to be a hat? Fuller did with his world game. I don't know. See, nobody's thinking system. Uh, um, uh, but, you know, if you, if you do that, he did, and he said, actually, in terms of if you take into account knowledge and knowing, the knowledge of, uh, what's his name, uh, Chardin, you know, you're taking, you're talking to a whole other way of being in the universe in terms of knowing. We were ignorant. We've been so fucking ignorant throughout all of history. We had to bet tales and 
do all kinds of things. But so whatever you get that, but he just he just had it coming uh, fuller at World Games, 65, 75, the major system study of this issue, right? And he had it all throughout human history has been essentially zero. Zero, 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 zero. And it started just coming up in the Enlightenment and that it started going up to where it started going. And then he had it was, it was technological. Uh, the zeitgeist has to do with the technological thing. Understanding technology is a, for, a force of production, other than just labor. But anyway, but he said, and he said, we had reached in capability, not the reality, the capability of a technologically induced alteration about 10% by the time of what we call the First World War in Europe. It was all the technology that was leading it. The capability, not the reality, the capability. You see, we got to about 20, and then it's going like this, hyperbolic. We got to about 20%. This was fine-tuned projection by major scholars who were looking at it. And you see, we got to about 20% by the Second World War, the end of the Second World War. So it's coming out of nothing in terms of the whole trend, and it's going like this. And he says, and he says 1952, whatever it's worth, interesting, this man's book. He said, 1952, they're projecting ahead, and they said, we had a 20-year period of imminent crisis to all human institutions as we approached and crossed the 50% mark. So we're coming up. 1952, 20 years out, he said it could be accelerated. We crossed that line in his projection from 52. We crossed, he said it could be in 1970. The same year that the weapons are now dated with accuracy as becoming species lethal. We were transcending material scarcity at the level of capability. Can you understand? Not the reality. The reality we've inherited all kinds of outdated institutions. Virtually all of our institutions are outdated. Education, politics, economics, everything is outdated because it's reified institutions out of a period that's being qualitatively transformed. Well, I see, Harold, that you are assuming a sociological approach. Well, I'm trying to get a comprehensive approach within evolutionary terms. Okay, sorry. Which is based on this uh, idea scarcity versus abundance and the capability, the technological capability. Exactly. Based on the no, but that's put within an evolutionary context of, of steady state evolution. Okay. Uh, the building of the building blocks and universe went through the same thing. You get steady state, and then there is qua, then there's, okay. then there's an, inter, there's, 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 the new appears. Well, the new me, appears. Let so let what me, I'm talking about is a new me, relationship in cosmos. Let me respond to the basic idea. You see, I am a Holocaust survivor. Yes. I lived under Hitler. Yeah. And I have also seen anti-Semitism in the Carpathian Crimea. And I have seen how Hitler slowly, slowly came to power and then Nazis <coughs> took over. So I have a certain, how should I say, innate sensitivity for um, extreme political and uh, social situations. And what I fear now, now, not that I cannot see the uh, dangers of uh, nuclear devastation, and I can see that too. But I see something much, much uh, less, but in a way more vicious, uh, happening. And that is that the United States is the. Jay Forrester. I'm uh, sorry. What? Jay Forrester. Yeah. Jay Forrester was the guy that I was referring to. I was going to come back to you to give you his answer. Okay, but Jay Forrest, major person in understanding population, yeah. Major voice, behind Schumacher and all that. It limits to growth and all the ecology stuff. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. It, I just wanted to get it out because I'll forget it by another 10 seconds. But the major factor that I can see in this situation is 
the United States international power, which is uh, completely dominant. Josh, why don't you get him, huh? Which is Josh, why don't you get uh, Joe talking? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, please. United States power, which is completely dominated by basically, how should I say, predatory, I know what to by uh, exploitative, economically authoritarian what the sources, and is threatened by individual terrorists, some of whom are fighting for just causes, some of them are just uh, opportunists who are gangsters. No, why? But it doesn't work. The, I don't know. the danger or the spirit that I see is evolving in the United States is the same kind of uh, nature as the development, the development in pre-Nazi uh -huh. Europe. Uh, well, okay. Now, pre-Nazi Europe and now, the deep right. depression Rational and the Weimar Rationally thinking, we can come to all kinds of conclusions. Yeah, right. But leaving the major possibilities open, there will be a completely different situation in the future of the United States if some major incident, much bigger, let's say, but still major, is still, still, you know, uh, minor incident like 9-11. Let's say if someone will uh, use a tactical nuclear weapon and just kill hundreds of thousands of people around Manhattan, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. The reaction to that mm -hmm. will be full-fledged. Yeah. Nazism in the name of defense. No, the d reaction to that yeah. would be, if I may, Joe, the, the, the reaction to that would be something that would create sociological, political conditions right for the ultimate unleashing of the whole thing. That's what is dangerous. Yeah, but that's it's the weapon systems that exist yeah, that's that's danger that's at the level of species. Yeah, that's possible, but I, I don't want to pre predict that because mm. I'm not a prophet, so yeah, I don't no, know, no, 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 I know no. what would actually happen. Mm. So can I ask you a question? If you anything at all, but let, if, I'm sorry, I interrupted him, I shouldn't have yeah, let, let me finish, because uh, the main issue here is what can be done in this desperate situation. Public access and, television with people like well, this young man. Yeah. Writing a book, well, enough for well, all, forever. Well, let me tell you what my uh, conclusion on the basis of my experience and my understanding of all the various philosophies and all the various, uh, <laughs> various psychological theories right. and, uh, yeah. and the economic yeah. uh, the, the theories and so on. In my opinion, what is necessary is the reach to reach the gut of influential people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And reach the gut of the masses of people. Two different things. In a, well, they have to go together. Yes, sir. Yes. In a way which would uh, change their feelings and their basic attitude. And the only force that I can see would affect the minds and souls, so to say, of the people is religion. Okay, because that. millions and millions, billions yeah. of people function on the basis of some kind of a God. Yes, I know, but that's changing. That's changing very rapidly. That's not the trend of the time. 
The trend of the time is away from those creation stories. Only in the minds of atheists. No, not, not in not, the, no, in the minds of agnostics or yeah, scientific. In the minds of agnostics too. But in actuality, the power of the religions is still so enormous. Um, I think it's dwindling. I think it's myself, living in the West and rising in the East. Well, maybe, maybe. Okay, let so, me talk to you. So you, you claim... But, but you want to finish, yeah, finish yeah, the final, yeah. my final question. Yes, please, sir. Now, at the center of these various religious obsessions of these billions of people, yeah. at the center is a concept of God. Okay. Now, if we are secular humanists yeah. and we just fight God, fight religion, we don't accomplish anything. We just go talking to ourselves and are happy about, you know, uh, uh, talking against evil. Okay. But what we have to do yeah. is to introduce something that would help people to transform their idolatrous convictions into still a God concept, but a God concept that is rational, that is uh, rationally emotive, that is naturalistic, that is based on reality, so that these billions of people, not the millions of atheists and agnostics. I don't address myself to them. Okay. I don't leave them alone. Well, you you know, see, but, yeah. so they are unimportant. But the, the billions of people who do use this concept of God, they have a high percentage amongst them. People who are, so to say, already vacillating in their God belief. They're vacillating in, in their God. In they, an they have the God, but they don't give it up. Uh -huh. But they, it's so it's not anymore this total obsession. And if we can bring something to them that would provide them with a good philosophical and psychological basis for the, for their God belief but on the basis of humanism, it would possibly uh, affect this general trend. Okay, well, yeah, but certainly a lot of the ethics come out of yeah. that, and so a lot of good things. The only <coughs> organization that is doing is the Church of Humanism. Uh -huh. Now, how we can get... Who, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let, I want to get the address. Who's the head of that church? Of seven? I want to get the church of humanism. I want to get the chapter and verse contact information. Okay. I want to get in touch Give with that person. person. Because uh, oh, yes. Joseph, I'm making a joke. The head of that church is thou. And, I, and I'm and i ready to talk to you on I and thou circumstances anytime you want. And so I, can, so can I Yes, please. Okay. That's All right, good. so you're saying we're in a changing well, I'm suggesting it. It's very. So what do you think the Just new, realize how absurd it is to think about that. What, what do you think the new well, man that's going to emerge? Well, I, I, for whatever it's worth, I come on the floor, and when I hear this young man, he called. I've talked to him on the phone. We're going to do a program next week or later this week, and everything. And he's written a book called Enough for All. You know, that's the main. I come on the floor, and Fuller's the only one that's been around. That is not. Um, relying upon something absolute. He, he uh, if I could, Joseph, were you here when, when Robert Bloom, I mean Howard Bloom's yeah, book? Was, yeah. Howard Bloom's written a really good, I couldn't put it down, 500 pages, I had to read it all, it was so well written. It was called The God Problem, How a Godless uni uh, Cosmos Creates. So that I don't agree with you. The God Problem is absolutist. They're looking for something absolutist. And the absolutist notion, I said to Howard when he had it, I looked up in, this, in the uh, index and everything, first thing after reading the book, and everything, it's a beautifully written book and everything, there wasn't one mention of a word synergy. Buckminster Fuller was the one who, his whole geometrics was based on synergy, and he made the 
people in the 50s, he would come into a, a room of intellectuals and scientists and say, has anybody heard the word synergy? No hand would go up. Everybody heard energy. And synergy is behavior of systems unpredicted by the sum of the parts. It includes the uncertainty principle. There's something resonatingly more than the sum of the parts of a maximally engaged system. It works with tensegrity. It works with the level of molecular structure. There's some resonating. So what you would have to do and have up on the table, along with all these absolutes, like God wants us to kill them and them and all the rest of the things that have been part of the human history, or God mid once on every belt buckle of every army that went out and killed, and all the rest of these things. Yeah, you're and not then, talking about God. You're no, I'm talking about, about absolute. Anything, there is nothing absolute. And who said there that? There are no absolutes. Did I say anything that is absolute? That's what's been the priesthood of God. What? God has been the absolute beyond the mundane. It's given a sense of... We are not communicating. We are completely out of here. <laughs> really? We are talking about something completely different. Really? Is either thing here... What well, I she was... It's a question what? she... No, no. What, what is this synergy? She asked, what is this thing you're thinking of? What? That's no, the what first question. What, what, is, what is it going to be if you get a world where it, synergy behavior is just unpredicted by the sum of the parts? We don't know. There is an a priori mystery. There's a priori mystery. If we were Homo habilis 200,000 years ago, we could not have known what it was going to be to be human. But we are coming into a new relationship in the cosmos if to, we make it. Me, you're talking to someone else. Then. Well, then I'm not. I'm talking to her. Not you. I'm talking to her. Person. She asked, what do you want? I'm saying it's synergetic. So you have to have something just materialistic. Not anything spiritual, not anything overriding, no arching principle, all the ethics and all that. That can be up there. You can have that up. You can have geopolitics. You can have Democrat, Republican, all kinds of absolutist things, Nazi, communist, all kinds of things. You can have religion and God and all that. And then you're going to have to have something up there that is going to relate to the reality of the world, which is materialistic. You have to have something that's materialistic. He, he's trying to say we're at a crucial, crucial point no, where there could be not, no absolutes. We there, don't know what it's going to be. Where there could be a breakthrough or a destruction. So I ask no. them, what do you see as the big breakthrough? What do you see as the new man? If we were homo habilis, what could we imagine? I don't know. I think we would do very well to understand. I just, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry to say that I, he didn't want to do it again. I just called uh, the secretary for Niles Elbridge. Now Eldridge was the main guy with Stephen J. Gould. I got it on my, I got a page on our website, autodidactic tutorials, okay? And I added it, they're the ones who explain, we, things, we, we, 100 years ago, everything was like, you know, God, and, or Galileo. And it, oh, it, we understand. It, was, it still is for many, many For many people, people in their ignorance. But I have, no. Well, in their objectivist no. ignorance, they're no. saying that there is God. You're not hearing me what okay. I'm saying. Well, that's... You're not hearing me what I'm saying. Well, I don't know, you're sort of... Uh, I agree with you that they, their belief in God is based on ignorance. Okay. Um, the vast majority the of people. Vast majority. And the desire for okay, some absolute repeat it. answer don't to repeat the question. Don't repeat it. We agree. I okay. just told you we agree. Okay. Yeah? So no, no absolute. Yeah. In yeah. answer to her question, there's no absolute. There's no absolute. We don't know what it will be. You it see, will be a, a way of being that we can't well, know. Well, uh, you know, in my philosophy, my advanced philosophy, yes, sir. everything is absolute and relative at the same time. Oh, okay. well, you've got, you got the whole ball game covered. About it, that's called synergy, that's my that's friend. It. What, 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 okay, that's another one. Okay, so, okay. Uh, okay, we're on the same page, maybe. Synergy. When I'm talking about God, I'm talking <coughs> about the creative process in nature. Well, that's a way to put Wait, wait. Okay. You don't have to call it God. Don't call it God. It's just for it, the creative process okay. in nature. What that is is the resonancy of an interaccommodative system. What? Right. Synergy is the, is, is the behavior of system unpredicted by the sum of its parts maximally engaged. Okay. That is done materialistically, okay. just materialistically, without any assumption of anything. You don't know what it is. How do you it's the uncertainty principle. 
creative processes. That would be that would be as close as we've come to it philosophically, something that makes some sense outside you of this young man's book is saying it's not, not enough for everybody. The, create, the creative process in nature is not an idea. The creative process, the actual creative process, is manifested through all kinds of different features. With all due respect, wait, wait, wait. Okay, let me finish. 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 I mean, let me finish. You're making a for example. Hard. Science, the arts, philosophy, social justice, personal growth, the development of uh, all the faculties of oh, what, oh, what? human beings. And oh, what? Of human beings? Faculties. Faculties. Oh, yeah. faculties. Yeah. In yeah. other words, yeah. the creative process in nature, whether you call it God or not, is unimportant. I so never used, ask Alison whether I ever use uh, the word God in my life. Sure, by all means. Can I say something? Sure. I, I, and that is, I think that um, you're talking about a synergistic process as a, as a process that creates change. That's, that's and that, and, and yeah. as opposed to the fact that he's talking about creativity in a positive sense. Synergistic processes don't have it to might lead be to something positive. They can lead to something negative. Absolutely and correct. He's Absolutely. And he's talking about the creative process that leads to the ideal reality. Yes, so obviously it's so, idealistic. So it's going to have a good outcome, and it's a good God, and everything's going to be good in the end. 99.9% .9 as far as the eye can see of the species that have existed in evolution, which we're part of, materialistically in the universe, has gone extinct. Maybe it has to be put up there. Maybe we're meant to entropy. Maybe we're meant to blow ourselves up. Yeah. Well, it's I'm probably sure. other universe. You can't, you can't, for. you can't. I'm asking, I'm asking for his book to be published. I'm asking for the positive thing because nobody ever mentioned the real existential situation that the, not the human species, well, the human species, that, but, 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 but the evolutionary process is that. It's not like, we've had 200,000 years of bumbling along up Mount Sisyphus. We discover things, we get things, we do things and everything. But we're now, what well, we have to start getting a sense, and the guy I called it, Eldridge, they were the ones who came, you have steady state, maybe for millions of years. The crocodiles are still living in steady state. The evolutionary process, you have steady state, steady state, then there's what is called a quickening or there's well, called punctuated can equilibrium. Can we give him a chance to respond since you're well, citing I, him over and over? All I'm doing is singing his praises for the title well, of his no, book he because he's bringing up. I don't know what he's saying. He's a, he's well, I haven't had a chance because we've all been yakking. Right. He hasn't had a chance, poor <laughs> fellow. But he's the title of his book, and I talked to him on the phone. He's into zeitgeist. Two things that really make some sense rather than all the reifying of outdated thinking and outdated institutions. Uh, I think he's the future because the way he's going, myself. Well, you but have the, a lot of faith in it him. may be that we're <laughs> meant, we can't have, have a ruler. Him. He's gonna say, no, it's gonna be creative, and it's gonna be all good in the end, and everybody's gonna be, and that may be, that? that may be, it may be we're meant to well, destroy. Who, who says that, I would just No, idealize, she's saying it's an ethic of having a good outcome. That's what people want. They want no, to I'm saying that that's what we what should be working for. Well, that's what, okay, but that would that's be... What, that's not what everybody wants. But you can't be working within a condition where that I, is the, a, that a is of the fact, absolute sine qua non of everything you're doing. That's, that's what religions give people. They give them a, they yeah, give them yeah, a, uh, a sense of uh, value, and all, a lot of our ethics come from that. But um, what do you think? I'm sorry, I keep talking to you about this thing... Uh, all this stuff we've been talking about. People are starting to leave. I'm sorry, I ran. No, 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 you don't ran. I have to go because I have a, a motion that's due in court. What I asked was, you you claim that we're at a crucial point where we are either going to self-destruct or there'll be a breakthrough to a new a new new species that we can't imagine. No, this, so there, I will, no there will be an arranging of our intellectual understanding according to this alteration on a positive vein, possible. If you're in a room and you got a kid, or you got 10 kids, and there's two hot dogs on the table, that's one thing. If you're there and there's, there's 10 kids and there's 30 hot dogs, that's different. 
It's material. We have transcended at the level of capability material scarcity. Right. Scarcity in all of its content and its ugliness. Please don't shout. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all I'm saying. And it's never mentioned. It's never mentioned. It's just ipso facto absurd. That's what his book's going to get. Unless the, the, the zeitgeist changes. Is that or the true? spirit of the zeitgeist Is changes. Is he right? About your book. Yes, that's what he said. So no, he, let him talk. You wrote a letter. Go ahead. Well, he's talking about this is what your book is going to do. In your book seems to me. Now, I'm invested in this idea of transcending material scarcity. There's no reason for somebody to stop. We do not have institute. We don't have a right economic theory. We don't have a right uh, political theory. <coughs> we don't have anything that takes that into account. It's all still zero sum. We've got the guns, we win. We got our system, we got our ideas, we win. It's real politique, which has been serving us very badly throughout most all of history. Whoever's got the gun can conquer. Rape, pillage, do whatever they want. That's the way it's been going. So we he can't go on with that. So he's saying we're at a pivotal, pivotal point where either going to self-destruct or move on to something else. And that that new reality can be based upon a qualitative transformation that we have transcended material scarcity. Material scarcity. Never has that been the case in terms of a collective so he thinks zeitgeist. So it's I mean, or what is your book about? Mostly this, this entire frame of reference that material scarcity is not an ecological reality. Any longer it was. It's changed. Right, right, right. Yeah, but th that's never mentioned. The zeitgeist people do. Fuller does. There's a few. But that's well, a discussion. That's absurd. Everybody's starving. Now, you there see. is discussion about the fact that in this country we're manufacturing food and throwing it away. Yes, that's true. So there's a lot of talk about that. And there is talk about that. Okay, okay, go write your motion. I have an impossible deadline. So okay. I have to be in court. Go write your motion. I'll be here. Sorry. I'll be in jail. Bye. I'll see you uh, during And listen, tell Joe to give him hell, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think Joe Barton's great. Yeah, that's part of Because he's fighting, to... he's fighting uh, the It was very nice system. to see you. I will see him back here. No, no, keep the pen. Go write your motion, okay, young bye. lady. You've got bye. work to do. You've got to fight this. Bye. Bye. Okay, there we go. It's very nice to meet you. Bye. Are you going to? Yeah. yeah. Really? Sorry. Okay. Thanks. Thank you all. I'd love to be able to. Thank you all. Enjoy. So anyway, you haven't had a chance to talk. I've been writing. I'm sorry. That, that fellow, what was his name? Forrest. Jay Forrest. I said that's a Forrest. He was the leading guy. All the ecology, you know, and the, and the uh, picking up on Paul Ehrlich and Malthus. And then he helped found this group of ecological Absolutely. He was really something. He was a major guy. And he's still alive, actually. Yeah, I think he's up in some way. He never did somewhere. I did a program with him. And he wouldn't say it on camera. And I brought up transcending scarcity. Every time I bring it up, people just go crazy. So it's on that it's on that report. No, he would not record it on the camera. He wouldn't just say it on camera. But essentially what he said, if you project a picture of everybody's got enough, this is kind of interesting that Peggy had on it. Uh, suppose you have a world where yeah. What does it mean to be a have? Suppose everybody was realizing their absolutely full maximal capability and potential within a context where there is sufficient for everything that can make that possible for them in a world where that's the case for everybody. Everybody's doing that. Uh, that would be like jump up time, end of time, and so forth. And he said, uh, so then let's just make a picture that uh, family A, Mr. and Mrs. Hobo, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and they've got their house, and they've got the trout farm, the uh, so trout river going, and they got the hay mow, and they got the pony for the kids, and everything is perfect like that. Uh, oh, they, they, like that, but he said, essentially the reason that the population problem of his talking, uh, development was good is that with the industrialization, they decided on their own not to have larger families, whereas in agriculture they had a larger family because 90% uh, of them would die. So they had to have larger families, the population growth came uh, from a condition of uh, poverty, let's say. When they get more advanced, and they get into, the ladies got lawyers, and they're this and that, and everything like that, they, um, what it is, is they decide, essentially what he was saying was, they, want, they would rather 
and they get their, their feet on the fast track to become a, a, a have and all that, they would rather have that new Buick than a baby. A baby, yeah, a Buick is more in tramp, or the yacht. They'd have the yacht. You can't have the fast track with the yacht and the fast track uh, material gains and a baby. The baby, they would rather have that than the baby. And it's a sign essentially of, in, of al deep alienation at the level of meaning for in the industrial age. That's what he would say. And he said if everybody had their thing, their, their idealized thing, you know, the bar with the hema with the kids playing on a swing and the pony and the, you know, the crop farm and all the good things and plenty of food, uh, they would realize babies are wonderful and they're breeders off the fucking planet. You've got to have an alienated population or else you're going to have them breed us off the planet. It's essentially what you said off camera. You wouldn't say it on camera. So you can never have your material, uh, non-material scarcity. It's an alienated state of the modern world that keeps the population under control. Well, I don't really include things that is back that up, scarcity, war, poverty. Well, the, the, well, that he 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 was talking. He, he's he's an ecologist, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. and you've got this thing. You know, it, so, for whatever it's worth, I just remembered him saying that he would not yeah, say it again. Yeah, so that you it, you can't. If you had a world where you transcend scarcity, everybody's going to realize one of the best things there is that you can have is a baby. So they'll have babies. The reason they're not having babies is because they want the goodies more than the babies and the, and the all of the bullshit that goes along with act status and winning and being a part and all the power and all that kind of stuff. So you have to keep them alienated in order. That's one of the things he presented to me. But um, I don't know. I, I just, that, that was off the population explosion that Jimmy brought up, you know. But um, I think it's just coming to a, I just brought it up. I'm frustrated because it's never mentioned, except he did. It's like a miracle. Here's a young person coming along, bringing the thesis that is the main thing I've been doing for 75 years that is always just laughed at off the table. It doesn't have any sense. It doesn't have anything. Let's go believe in some God or something. I don't know. So I'm frustrated because, and, and the, best, the best mind and the comprehensivist They've completely taken the intellectual exercise and, and specialized it out so much, divided and conquered, and that what, there's no comprehensive what, thinking. What, what instrument ality would you use in order to, uh, so to say, effectuate this idea in practice? I think the practice thing is to have a public access cable television system that can be talking with people. We're going to do a program next week. I'm going to try and subvert the whole fucking world and get the world to think about things in a different kind of way and stave off blowing the whole fucking thing up. I'm worried about the lack of vision by our so-called leadership. They're a bunch of uh, uh, blinkers, as far as I can see. So you gotta have some way of communicating it, you know, I think, and it should be more, that thing, I don't want to use it because it's, it, there'll be some, fuck, excuse my thing, there'll be something coming out of the copyright thing that the History Channel did, it was magnificent. A magnificent uh, thing. Maggie put me onto it. I recorded it and I made a DVD. The history of the world in two hours. And it was what? Answer. Hello? Okay. Hello? Hello? What? I'm not doing well, I'm trying to get him to. He doesn't want to say. Come and say some words or something. Come and say. People want you to talk. You're not talking. Why are you such a wilting flower? Or, uh, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> talk, talk up. He wants you to talk. What do you think? I'm talking all this bullshit. What do you think? Um, it's easier for me to <laughs> talk when I have my question. Well, what do you think about what I said? Or the theme we're talking about, we're coming to the end of the human experience. Ever, it's the beginning of punctuated equilibrium and a new relation. It's like Teldar de Chardin. We're coming to mega point, you see, or something. And that do you think we're able to destroy the species? Do you think we've transcended scarcity? Apparently your book says that. Mm -hmm. Okay, talk. Okay, I mean, do you have any questions about 
No, no, talk, talk off the top of your head. What do you think? I can. It's just easier. Yeah. To How will that create change? How will that fact create change in the world? Good for you. Um, well, it depends on the type of change that you're discussing. Yeah, ask me. How will talk that fact you can. change the world? What, type what of kind of change will that create oh, in the world? Yeah, I don't know. The change is such a the, so general the, semantics, change? the general semantics would say that that's a weird word. You can't use that that word. You have to be more. So it won't, it more won't change anything. It'll change a lot. So what I, will it change? His book, would you like to have it be a world changer? I, well, you want to know, like, what my goal is to see, like, what, what I'd like to I'm see. I'm wondering, he keeps talking about scarcity and going Transcendent scarcity. scarcity. And so once we create reality. a situation where people get beyond their scarcity phobia. The whole society. Then and how will that change things? Uh, this is, or will it not change things? Uh, it's just such or a, does it not it's matter? A, it's, a, it's a weird question. Because it's almost, it, it's sort of obvious. Why is that, it important? Just that change is a change. Why is that important? I think I think you said this once. Uh, the, that's it's, it's one of the most fundamental changes that you could ever happened in the human history. But why does it uh, matter? That's why. The same reason why we when we found out that the earth revolves around the sun. That, that was, was a big being, that was a big at being a geocentric world. Like just that fact itself changes the way in which we have to relate to ourselves, the way we have to relate to the environment, the way we have to relate to everything. But if as long as people continue believing that you that they live in scarcity, then Every system, every institution, every practice that people do through day to day that they that seems rather 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 right and normal do you think it is will, outdated. Do you think it will lead to more uh, justice and equity across well, what is, continents? I I, in terms of food. The word justice and equity, those are not words. Fair distribution of food. That people won't be starving. But we've already transcended. Not, but, but they don't not, have the food. That's true. That's, so, what you, that's what you keep saying. So why? So how will the fact that we know it get the food into those people's mouths? The, it's it's a knowledge problem. That's that's the very that's the very essence of why people like Buckminster Mr. Fuller have been writing. It's the reason why organizations like the Zeitgeist Movement exist and the Venus Project, John Fresco, because they're trying to make people aware of that fact. If so, no one knows, like for instance. The entire time that human beings were existing on the planet, the sun was was not this was the center of the solar system. It's always been there. It was just human beings didn't know that right. the sun was the center of the right. solar system. So you're saying so, there never was scarcity? No, no, no. What I'm saying is that the knowledge existed just outside of what human beings knew. Mm -hmm. Until human beings knew that, until that was part of the collective knowledge. There were some human beings who knew whether or not the sun right. existed. But until it became a part of what Peter Joseph would call the group mind, until everyone accepted that fact as a reality, mm -hmm. that's when behaviors changed. That's when See, science my, developed. My, my feeling, my concern is that a lot of people know that. A lot of people are involved in overabundance of food and destroying it and not knowing how to sell it because there's too much of it, they can't sell it for a good price. So. You know, but it, but that just, there's no greed pr principle involved in shipping the food over to people who are starving. They could, nobody's making money off of that to speak of. They want to make money in other ways. They're more concerned about making money yeah. than they are about people over there eating. Right. It has nothing to do with whether there's enough food. It has to do with whether they the institution. whether they have enough money. The institution. <laughs> Well, that's the true. The and it underscores all economic. And they'll never have enough money. And the, the, <laughs> if I may, if I, may I, I want you to keep talking because you're making sense. Uh, the, the economics is the idea of it. You know, and uh, the, uh, the definition of economics is the science of allocation of scarce resources. Scarce resources. We need to have an alternate way to form capital rather than having it all concentrated in auto path savings in a few hands and a way of distributing demand, because along the technological line, what's also happening is a vast, Keynes, Keynes predicted it, a vast 
technologically induced massive unemployment. And the only way we have is distributing demand is through jobs and through the labor theory of value, which informs virtually all economic theory internationally and nationally. They're out of date. The only thing they talk about, you gotta get a job. And they're not distributing demand through ownership of the technology producing the wealth, and that's the trend. So they have to get up to speed, and all of our political leaders are only mm. wanting to have- Can you hear me? We stopped him from talking again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, no. Well, no, but that answers your question, or it deals with the question. And all your economic theories and the peer reviews and all that are reifying outdated economic theory, whether it's Keynes or Schumpeter or Marx or whatever. They're all doing or you know, including our president and Mr. Guyton. Well, I'll try to listen to you on television. The no, I'm sorry. I didn't. I'm sorry. The institutions that develop under this assumption of scarcity and the physical reality of scarcity, while they existed. Hello. I'm sorry, say that again. Hello. Sorry, while, we could, while we created these structures of, of monetary policy, monetary systems themselves, economic systems, and however we distributed resources in the land, whichever it was, whether it was through totalitarian means, whether it's through democratic means, whatever. Um, all of those were predated this 1970 revolution of us transcending the point of material you, scarcity. You got the same date. Yeah. You have the same date? Yeah. <laughs> there's hope. There's hope. So 1970s year one. So if all of the systems, all the all the all the economic systems, every institution that was created is still in practice post that revolution, then that means they're all outdated. But they're still in practice and, and still recognizing their, like, the knowledge 